This is without adding the adapter, but at 13,000 feet right now, my head's feeling a little lightheaded. The mitochondrial uh, densities increase, and that's like what's creating energy within the cell. Got it. So all that's increased, so that can you know benefit any type of athlete, but really anybody in general. And we're on our way to 14.5. 22,000 feet. That's what it's about. It's when they call it like the death zone. We're in Gardner, New York. We're at this place called Hypoxico. I have asked everyone, I mean pro athletes, Olympic athletes, trainers, coaches, etc., on the best place that gives you altitude training and we found it. And so we're here, it's like two hours from my house, but we're gonna go in there and try some altitude training and I think I'm gonna buy a unit. I like investing in my health. Not only will this help me um, with the altitude training and you know getting ready for these mountains, but just overall health. And so it's kind of my Christmas present. Let's go. Yeah, a lot of climbing, very new to it. Um, I'm not, I don't come from like a climbing background or anything. I grew up on a farm in New Hampshire and okay. you know, grew up outside and yeah. you know, that, that stuff, but I don't know, I, I want to do something and really step into vulnerability yeah. massively over the next 18 yeah. months and so. I've done five of the eight, seven summits. I haven't done Killy or Karstens or Vincent. Okay. So I've done all the other ones. I'm Nims done. is actually leading me up at Kakagawa. These came out with 14 peaks on Netflix. He holds a record for doing uh, the 14 8,000 meter peaks. He did it in like seven months. You know, I've been fortunate to see a lot of people go through this road and like, you know, A to Z, like, I mean, I could tell you're like super type A motivated, but like, you know, make sure you like it. Man. Yeah. Oh, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't like, you gotta, you know, it's a long road and it's like. I love it. Certain parts yeah. of mountaineering are like shockingly boring. On Lotsi, it's the four tallest. I, I tried it without O's and it's like, you know, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And like that. I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. What we were just discussing is like, will one session help you? No, you're not gonna get an adaptation, but you might get accelerated weight loss. And for your Kilimanjaro trip, you can kind of mimic the workload and maybe create some be behavioral adaptations. Maybe like, discomfort. And just, yeah, and like maybe you even like learn to pressure breathe a little bit more. You learn how to pace okay. when you're moving ridiculously slow. And so like there's some behavioral side of it that maybe comes from this. Kilimanjaro, you guys know like your ascension profile. It's it's like five, six days. So you have an eight day trip or? No, you yeah, six days. So ideally you would be acclimatized to about like your day four before you left. That would make it so you kind of aren't fatigued. Like the hardest part of the trip is probably staying at the high camp and not sleeping or eating as well. So like one helpful thing with this is you can you can acclimatize to that so you, you're you going with a stronger immune system because you, you are acclimatized already. You're about to go expose yourself to all kinds of, you know, developing world bugs and bad water quality and food <laughs> and, you know, so your GI system is going to be taxed and then you're going to lose appetite because you're at altitude. And so like if you could negate the effect of all of that a little by coming and acclimatized, you'd be, you know. That's ideal. That's yeah, totally. Doing. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't like expect to break any PRs in here, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and just like common sense. So in here, you're, back to your question, you want to keep your pulse ox above above 80, certainly, probably closer to 85. So that translates into like you know at your fitness level, it's not going to feel like a muscular workout. It's gonna, but you'll cool. you'll notice it and you'll be taxed. Hiking on the treadmill at 15% grade, it's kind of similar to what you can expect on the mountains. Yep. And then and then you, your pulse ox is going to be more accurate because it's not pumped bouncing around and just kind of steady methodical plotting, you know. So these go from anywhere from like 40K to, uh, I mean, we just did a $600,000 one in Poland that's an entire gym that's, wow. so, so high altitude. Yep, wow. exactly. So we do swimming tunnels, really, if you can dream it up, we've kind of done it. Uh, camels and guitar to equine racing things, I actually have to call Loma Linda, Linda University about, we have uh, 12 sheep going into a room reproductive health and so we're Whoa. all over the place I finished my two big jobs for the FAA so that our system that can go up to 30,000 feet and so um, basically pilots go into it to check if they are if they recognize that they're hypoxic they reach up grab their oxygen mask put it over their face so they, they put like I don't know 20 30,000 pilots through our chamber a year to, to sort of pass this test 
Wow. So we use this <laughs> really feel it immediately. Yeah, we use this one for a, a lot of R&D in here. So right now we're at 13.1%. So it's going to continue to drop in here. So this is uh, this is our commercial K2 system on the back of this wall. All right, and we're at 13% in the room so yeah about 12 5 and we're on our way to 14 5. so this is your um arterial blood saturation so you're at 93 percent right now so what should i be around i mean it's hard to say it's all subjective it is right yeah i was reading about it and it like yeah. didn't really give me an answer and there's not really a good or bad it's all about how you feel and how you're performing and like how long you've spent. But the nice thing when you have this system at home now, like for instance, when we have clients sleeping at altitude, one of the metrics I'll give them in terms of their sleeping is that you wanna be in the low to mid 90s when you're sleeping. Cause even at 94 or 95, that's still a stimulus that your body's not used to. Cause if you're at 99 regularly, you know, 94 is a stimulus that you're not used to. And you don't need to be at 88 to get a good, like, prolonged passive exposure for a stimulus. Fine, yeah. yeah, 92 is fine. Now, if 92 is causing you to wake up like dizzy with a headache, yeah. then that's not good either. So the pulse ox is just one tool to measure it. The best thing is like how you feel. It's the same with the workout. You can go by heart rate, you can go by power, you can go by all these metrics, but at the end of the day, that perceived exertion is really probably the most valuable metric we have yeah yeah we're, we're at 12.5 12 12.5 12 yep like i feel it yeah you know you yes. feel you start jogging at this yeah i'm sure dude i was at four and a half and i'm like let me do Because for the most part, like really we're at 15,000 and then we go up and then down, but like yeah. we're at 15,000. Yep. And that Which is crazy because the first four days you're, you walk to 15,000 and then you just do the one big push then you're back down to 12. Yeah, and that last big push is probably gonna get pretty slow kind of just. The nice thing is like Brian was saying, you know, you're a little bit insulated from the AMS risk because you're just going up and What's back. What's AMS risk? Acute mountain sickness, yeah because you're not going to sleep up there. Yeah. That was the thing about like, each time you ascend, if you're going to sleep at that next higher altitude, the overexertion is problematic. Now, is it above 8,000 meters where oxygen becomes really deathly scary? 22,000 feet. That's what it's about. It is when they call it like the death zone. And like, I'm not like nervous. No. Like, I'm not, I should be nervous, I'm good. I definitely care. He's trying to convince himself. No, because no, because you're the train. He's like, I'm not nervous. You're nervous. He's like, dude. I'm like, I'm no, because you said Barry didn't like complete it, but I think Barry's like an in shape person. Oh, they're like peaks. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not. Supposed to have a jogger. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you gonna be jogging on the mountains? I'm not. It's good. <laughs> I think the eyes are shut. Or 14,000 feet. This is interesting because this was what Rainier was when I was starting to feel like, oh, like right now I'm feeling lightheaded. Yeah. For sure. What's your uh, pulse oximeter? 77. What was the um, impetus? 25 minutes. We go 25. Three, three minutes. Um, they're like, what are you going to do next? I'm like, I don't know. So when I was out in Colorado, my buddy, was just getting, he's like, I'm about to go to Everest to finish the seven summit. I'm like, what's that? He's like, where you hike the, climb the highest point. Explain that to me, I'm like, I wanna do that. Oh. And like, so this whole thing is called Find Your Peak. There's a massive campaign. I have all my sponsors, Gymshark, you know, the, the different companies that support me, the different companies that I've invested in, and now they support, so Super Copy, Woods, Cots, Gymshark. We have a ton of brands behind us, so hopefully it'll just bring light, but I'm writing in a journal each day. Oh. Um, each chapter will kind of be thought out of what I'm doing, so the first chapter is vulnerability, and really just throwing yourself at vulnerability and be honest with yourself, like, yo, you don't know what's gonna happen, but work hard, be kind. Information is at the fingertips of, of everybody. Yeah. You know, with your cell phone, with the computer, with the internet, I mean, you can do and accomplish anything you want. And he's a walking testament of it. 
So now it's about, all right, enough with the excuses, just put the work in. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you, you haven't climbed the mountain? Okay, well, you can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. You haven't started the business, you can figure it out. And that's why, like, getting you guys, companies like this, bringing light, like, guys, this is the education that's out there yeah. that will allow you to never, never have a ceiling on, like, what you can ever do. And so, yeah. I know people are going to love this. Yeah. I can feel it already. It's all awesome. dying over here, but I know even using this for the next week, I think I'll start acclimating myself. Oh, you will. Yeah. And then I'll be extremely acclimated on Kilimanjaro. Then the 10 days I'm back in the US, I'll still use this. Yeah. So by the time I go to Aconcagua, I'm fucking ready. You got a headache. You got a headache you have. So Your eyes are heavy. You can feel. Two, two and a half miles an hour. You know, a little. You guys are looking a little gas. <laughs> What do you mean? I feel so <laughs> so, so right now you guys are at like 12% oxygen. So you're going to take this with you, Devin. Okay. 1,000 feet. Where the hell does it go? 15,000 feet. I'm way slacking here. You're going to have a headache if you do. You're going to have a headache. Right yeah, yeah. It's like, it's also like, it's not I, a I have to do one back flip in here. My elevation is higher. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice. Did you get it? That's the first one I've seen in here. I'm gonna do one now. You can see oh, yeah, what the oxygen percentage is. Yeah. So like Chad's messing with that right now, but it's like 14%. It's 3,300 meters or 11,000 feet, which is you know Cusco. Yeah, we're at 12%. So about the type of punch. Oh, is right here. Perfect. Yeah. So then you can you know you can kind of use this as a focusing tool. Here's you're gonna be next week, right? Yeah. So in its simplest form, if you're improving your ability to transport and then utilize that oxygen, it's gonna to lead to performance benefits or wellness benefits in every respect. So okay. oxygen's like the energy. Yeah. And so that's that's basically it in its most simple form. So, so you're 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 allowing your body to util one intake more oxygen. That's right. Right. So now you just have more oxygen in. Well, the, the, the stimulus of the altitude training then allows your body to become more efficient at absorbing more oxygen. Got so it. that'll increase your, your VO2 max, your lactate threshold, so your ability to buffer lactate. So yep. that's, you know, and so, yeah, yeah. and so, um, and then transporting it. So your, your red blood cells are kind of what carry the oxygen. And then there's the, the capillaries become more uh, receptive at moving the oxygen into the cells. And then the mitochondrial uh, densities increase and that's like what's creating energy within the cell. Right. So all that's increased so that can you know, benefit any type of athlete but really anybody in general. And two other things that are pretty big, cardiovascular, maintaining cardio fitness when injured. So a lot of the EPL teams who have essentially the best physiologists in the world, yeah. they use, they have, they all have little altitude rooms like this in order to basically maintain fitness when injured. So Rob was asking about Alter G treadmills, anti-gravity treadmills. So basically like Dwayne Wade used this so he couldn't, you know, load his knee when he's recovering from it. So he's on an Alter, Alter G treadmill, but then he's adding the altitude to help improve oxygen transportation, probably specifically to his knees. And the other one is um, repeat sprintability. And that's, there was a meta-analysis done and it's kind of more for team sport athletes. They, they studied 12 studies and essentially they, they didn't define the interval length. Like the basketball study was like 15 per second, 15 second full gas sprints. I think they only did six intervals on the treadmill. They did that for like only three weeks, three a week. and. They measured this with a pre and post yo-yo test. So the yo-yo test is like a measure of, of uh, resistance to fatigue. And so basically you're yourself. like running from cone to cone and then it's like beep, beep, beep. And then the beeps get faster. And so they, they measured this with everything from that 15 second interval NBA versus a 90 second soccer interval. Right. And basically they, it's, it's, it conclusively uh, shows you improve your resistance to altitude because it's a meta-analysis. It's a study of a bunch of studies of this concept. So improve, you know, resistance to fatigue. And so, you know, wow. for a cyclist trying to have kind of more matches to burn late in a, a race or or any any athlete, but team sport specific stuff. So just know that there is a it's pocket there, there. Okay. and uh, that's where it opens. Cool. Same on the top. These rigid poles. Tight. These pockets are closed tightly. And it actually, at first glance, it looks like, oh wait, it opens on the wrong side, but it doesn't. It opens right here. There is a bit of a wrestling match getting these. Yeah, it's a tent. But it's a yeah, tent. it's like a don't, it's, it's yeah. So this literally just snaps like that. Cool. 
Um, there's a little gray button under there, and that just releases like that. Where's the button that release? Right there, got it, yep. Your high altitude adapter. So you use the high altitude adapter if you want to get this up to 21,000. Got it, okay. So only if you're doing probably a passive, so there's three kinds like of exposure. Like a quick workout or? Either a quick workout or a passive short exposure. So like 21,000 feet, but five minutes while you're just sitting there. Okay. Um, your sleep exposure, don't use the high altitude. Don't ever use that. Not even, for sleep. Even even if I'm at, um, even if I come back from Killy, no, it's not worth it. Wait, if you get to a point where you're sleeping so comfortably and you're even up at like 13,000 feet and you're getting ready to trade this back in and we're gonna loan you a head tent for your you yeah. know, pre acclimatization for Everest, then we'll revisit the high altitude cool. thing. But there's lots of consideration. Do you have a head tent by the way? Like just a head? Yeah, well, like if so my girlfriend didn't want to sleep in it. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to take one with you? Could I? Totally. Just in case. Yeah. Because yeah. she, she, I just texted her and said we're sleeping at altitude. She goes, why do I have to sleep at altitude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is not loud at all. No. No. It's like whiteboard kind of like. Yeah. And that's what I say. Yeah. But it's funny because customers will buy them and they'll call me and they're like, you didn't tell me it was this loud. I can't sleep. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. So you're about 10,000 feet. <laughs> you're gonna smack everyone in the gym. <laughs> yeah, I mean, truth is not a big deal. I mean, you're, you can put this, you're gonna put this into a cup holder. Cause you're not, you're gonna walk. Well, that, like, that can totally just clip on the front of the treadmill too. That's what we'll yeah. do over there. Is just put yeah, what do you just put it next to it? How fast does it take to... <laughs> well, so this is why I shouldn't have given this. Stuff. <laughs> I know. I'm just. Gonna, it's gonna take a little. You know, it's gonna take a, a hot minute. For it to get I mean, you feel it right. immediately. Yeah, the, this is without adding the adapter, but at 13,000 feet right now, you feel it. Like feel like my head's feeling lightheaded. 